Hello and welcome back to my channel. Ralph looks very scraggly today, but it's because we got caught in the rain and he's just drying off, bless him. First and foremost, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do, I'm getting so close to 2,000 subscribers, so do hit that subscribe button because I've seen my analytics and 70% of viewers haven't subscribed, so I can see you. Game week 12 wasn't as bad as I expected, which is a real relief because I thought it was going to be an absolute car crash. I did end up taking the minus four hits, but of all the weeks to do it, it would have been the blank game week, so I'm not feeling too bad about it. I was also above average, which is positive stuff from what I aim for every single week, so that is good. In terms of transfers this week, sorry, I'm using Ralph as like a prop. In terms of transfers this week, I have no idea what I'm planning to do, so we will go through my team now, see how I did, see how I'm thinking of keeping, and then discuss some transfer options at the end. So let's look at my Game Week 12 review. Morning before I get into this video, I haven't seen Ralph for two days because I've just been really, really busy at work, but he is so clingy today. But FYI, if you hear any noises, it's just my dog pottering around. Anyway, here is my team. I'm on 700 points in total and I got 46 points, but obviously I took the minus four. The average was 39, so I am ahead of that, which is good. And as I said in my intro, uh -huh. that is what I always aim for. Please stop growling at me. If we start with the keeper, I went for Pope and it's quite annoying because I was happy that he got six points, kept a clean sheet, but Ward got nine. He picked up the bonus points. So I am semi-kicking myself for going Pope over Ward for this week. It's so close, I'm not going to be too upset about it, but it is that it is frustrating, I'll be honest. And then when we get into my team, so obviously I didn't have enough players um, to field for this week, but it's okay, I took one hit. I was really not feeling a minus eight, so I thought that was pushing it, and I am glad I didn't go for one, because there weren't too many high scorers this week. I think there were a lot of surprises. But old Trippier, he is locked forever. I am so glad that I have him on my team. I didn't start off the season with him, but he was a really, really good call to transfer in. So he secured nine points against Everton and got the three bonus points. That's how we're going to climb the ranks. If we're getting those bonus points in, that is the way to go. So he is 100% staying. I'm actually thinking of bringing in another Newcastle player, not this week against Spurs, but for Villa and Southampton, I am quite tempted. I'm slightly nervous about the upcoming fixtures because they are playing Spurs. But Spurs didn't play very well this week, so hopefully there's something off. And I can also say this as someone that doesn't have Harry Kane on my team. <laughs> I get quite relieved when they don't do very well and Kane doesn't haul in a bunch of points. So there's always that fear, that one player that you're scared not to have on your team. Harry Kane is mine. Fingers crossed they get absolutely thrashed by Newcastle. And then Kilman genuinely wasn't expecting much from him, so just getting one point is enough. Did concede a goal, it was kind of inevitable to happen against Palace, but I didn't have any alternative, he had to play. I'm not glued to Kilman. I will put that out there. Leicester fixture, if I have to keep him for this week, fine, but I am looking to transfer him out, and I think I have a million in the bank, so he's 4.6, I could bring in someone better. I will get into it, but I'm looking at my defenders, and I've got Kilman and I've got Emerson, and I'm just not really glued to them. And then Nico Williams! <laughs> Stand out, man of the match. Nico Williams is this week's Andreas. I was over the moon, like so pleased. Nico Williams has basically been on my team since the start. I think I did have a few weeks where I didn't have him, but then I brought him back in. But I mean, go on girl, played the full 90 minutes and kept a clean sheet. I was actually lucky enough to go to the Forest Bryson game on Monday night. I was shattered. I didn't get home till 2am and then I was in work early the next day. But it was so fun to see. Amazing that Forrest's defence is now like up there. So good. Hats off to them for keeping the clean sheet. He deserves every single one of those four points. Frustratingly, we were sat in the home end. I was trying to suppress any cheers for Forrest because it's just offensive to people around me if I'm like, woohoo, <laughs> when they do something good. But thankfully, I had Trossard on my team. We'll get to him. So I was able to just kind of shout at him. I did actually make a mini vlog about the game, which is on my YouTube channel as a short. And I've also joined TikTok at Yellen FPL. So follow me there. I'm planning to do a few more match day vlogs. But yeah, really happy with Nico Williams. I don't see myself transferring him out anytime soon. Forest's fixtures, however, <laughs> this week we've got Liverpool. Um, and then Arsenal. So Nico may go back to being a bench warmer for a while, but I see myself keeping him on there. 4.1 million, it's not the end of the world, is it? And this has been his second best week of the season. He only did better against West Ham in game week two, so he got seven points then. I have full faith he is just going to thrive. And like I said, Forrest's defence is looking so much more solid. Hopefully they can work on the attack and then actually rise through the ranks on the table. Now coming on to Salah. Oh, this was so anticlimactic. This always happens. I bring in these names that I expect are going to hold in a bunch of points and it doesn't happen. So, Salah, 
The captions the argument. When you haven't got Helen playing, it does make it a bit more exciting because I think everyone is just kind of set and forget with Helen. Salah, I had this five minutes before I left for the Brighton game on Monday and I was talking to two of my friends and I was talking about captaining Salah or Trossard and then they were going on at me to captain Trossard and I had so much pressure on me. Honestly, I tweeted a poll and then people were saying, why is this even a competition between Salah and Trossard? Obviously it's Salah. I gave in to peer pressure, thankfully. <laughs> but I really thought after Brighton's performance on Monday that I would be on my high horse right now about Salah and cheering on the fact that he probably scores two goals, something like that. Three points in total. I would have been better off captaining Nico Williams and that's not anything against Nico because I love the man. But really, you Salah, three points, especially after his last game. So he played the full 90 minutes, which is kind of a guarantee. And Liverpool kept a clean sheet, which is good. But after last week's game against Man City and him scoring, I really thought we were going to see more against West Ham. So it's annoying. And now I am kind of questioning bringing Salah in. I mean, really, my transfers just weren't worth it. Trossard and Salah. <laughs> nine points in total six if you would take away the captaincy pick i probably just got caught up in fpl twitter and suggestions as you shouldn't do you should play your own game but i am easily led i definitely want to keep salah for the forest fixture this week and depending on how he does in that i will also keep him for leads Spurs I'll have to think a bit harder about. But I do also want to bring in potentially Foden or bring back Kevin De Bruyne. With that in mind, I don't know if I'm going to keep Salah. The thing is, we just know Salah is so good, but am I holding on to the past when he was just the high scorer of FPL and I need to get out of that and accept the fact that it's not last season and bit him off. I don't know. I'm just, I'm finding it really hard dealing with Salah at the moment. Uh, he will be staying for the next week minimum. But I don't know about beyond that because there could be other alternatives. And then Trossard, on the plus side, saw the man in the flesh, was very excited. He made an effort, so I can't say anything bad about him. It was just unlucky, to be honest, that Forrest's defence was so spot on. <laughs> also, Henderson in goal, I haven't gotten into this, but wow, that man had a fire lit. Is that a phrase? He had, whatever the phrase is, he was on fire. But obviously that's not a very good thing for Brighton. And there was so much hype against Trossard this week, which again, I joined in on. In terms of keeping hold of him, he was kind of my one week punt. I wasn't thinking of keeping him in my team long term. And especially this week, they're against Man City. So he would probably be a sensible one to remove from the situation or potentially bench. I do really have a soft spot for Brighton players though. It may be that I do keep hold of him and then I bring him out again against Wolves, but we will see how we get on. We'll go into the transfer chat in a minute. I trust us. <laughs> Quite disappointing. I should just not transfer players in because they seem to not do very well when I do. Andreas will give the man a week off. He had two weeks of being in the spotlight in my team and I thank him for that. These three points are enough for me from Andreas because he has shone. He's been an absolute shining star in my team for the last few game weeks. And it was nice to have someone that was actually playing in game week 12 so I didn't have to panic about transfers. But I think Pereira again will be staying in my team. It was disappointing to watch the game last night and not see him score or have any involvement. But he needs to give the others a chance because as I said, shining star of the team. No bonus points again. I, I still think it's a crime that <laughs> he didn't receive bonus points against West Ham or Bournemouth. But we'll let that one go. I won't take it up with anyone. And then they've got some nice cushy fixtures coming up, especially the Everton games. I may bench him this week and then bring him on for Everton. I'm not entirely sure yet. But I am, yeah, I just, I can't talk about Andreas without smiling because he really did make my team. And then Zaha, woohoo, you go. This is what we were looking for. Eight points. Thank you very much. Scored a goal. You can imagine my absolute delight when I heard that. I don't think I watched this game, actually. But Palace are looking good. And those fixtures, look at the run of them. I am excited. So 100% playing against Everton. Actually playing in all of them. I will keep him in my team probably until the new year. That's, that's a good commitment for me, staying there Zaha, you've done me proud. Hopefully he has a lot of involvement this weekend and brings in a million and one points. It is quite tempting to double up on Palace players, so watch this space, there could be more of his teammates coming in. Tony, yeah, two points for playing, nice, well done. I had a lot of enthusiasm for him last week, so this week I will downplay it a bit so that I'm not too much of a fangirl. Um, but I do like the look of Brentford's upcoming fixtures. I think he's going to do some very good things, particularly in the Wolves game and the Forest game. I was toying around the idea of bringing in Jesus, but he is one yellow card away from suspension, and I think that's too much of a risk. 
So I'm going to keep hold of Tony and the whole front three, to be honest, for now. And then Watkins, this man, what he lacks in points, he makes up for an enthusiasm because every five seconds he is trying. He's trying so hard. Can some goalkeeper just let him have one in, please? He, bless his heart. It's a shame that FPL doesn't sometimes reward the enthusiasm because, again, I would throw some bonus points at him. Frustrating game to watch from the Villa side against Fulham last night. Very nice to watch from the Fulham side, though. But they're playing Brentford this week. And Watkins, I feel quite stubborn because I brought him in and he hasn't really done anything yet. I kind of want to keep hold of him until he does so I can be like, ha ha, that was a good call. But I don't know if I'm just damaging my team, to be honest. At the moment, I don't think my front three is the biggest issue because I've got Halland and Tony. So I think I am going to stick with Ollie Watkins for a while. I don't know what it is. I just have a good feeling, but my gut feeling is never right. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm following it in this case, but I will keep hold of him. And then we've spoken about Ward and then the other three didn't play. Emerson is back. But I don't know how likely it is that he'll play. And with Emerson, I think I'd rather have Dyer. It's hard. Honestly, at the moment, I'm just like, oh, I'll just put them on my bench. But I can only put three players plus the goalkeeper on my bench. So that's not a great tactic. But we were looking to transfers now. My thing with transfers is I've realised I much prefer playing FPL and watching the games when I have players that not everyone has. So, for example, Watkins. I'm really, I'm really emotionally invested in him. Um, no one else is, no one else cares. And this is what puts me off bringing in Saka or Foden. I have wanted to bring in Saka, I want some Arsenal players, but everyone's doing it. And then the same with Foden, I do feel like I need that Man City asset because I've taken out De Bruyne. But Foden and Saka are both the players that I want to go for, but it's who everyone is bringing in. I mean, if we look at the transfers for this week, top transfers this week, Foden number one, then Saka. I know Saka could potentially be injured, but 75% chance of playing. I would take those odds. I think he will play. And then I've already got Haaland and I've already got Martinelli. Oh, poor Trossard. And Kane being transferred out. Anyway, I am leaning towards bringing in Saka. It's a sensible decision, and especially with Arsenal's fixtures and how they've been playing, particularly next game week, they've got Forest at home. I can see them absolutely hauling in the points then. And that's another one that I would like Jay-Z's for, but I just don't know if he's going to be on his best behavior. So I was having a play around looking at my team it's the defense that's just the weakest. I'm not absolutely committed to Emerson. I'm not committed to Kilman. What I could potentially do is get rid of Emerson and then the alternatives I was looking at, I will talk you through them. Right, first up, replacement. I could still get my Arsenal fix if I bought in Saliba. I have enough money in the bank, it would actually leave me with 0.8 million left over. And he has been doing well. If we look at his history, five points against Leeds recently, love it. 15 points against Brentford. Yes, maybe crossing over the one point weeks, but I am liking the look of him and I feel as though Southampton and Forest at least, Arsenal could keep a clean sheet. Chelsea fan again, I'm going to optimistically hope that Arsenal don't keep a clean sheet that week. But I, I think he could be quite a good call to bring in. The other alternative is bringing in Ben Mee. I've enjoyed watching Brentford so far this season and I did go through my phase before I brought in Tony where I was just obsessed with Brentford and Brighton players. And Brentford's fixtures, Villa, Wolves, Forest, again, really, really appealing. If I was to bring him in, that would leave me with 1.4 million in the bank. And then I could look at my midfield and potentially upgrade someone or take out Salah, bring back De Bruyne. I think that gives me quite a lot of options. But I did also touch on the fact that I'd quite like to bring in Dyer at some point. So if I did Ben Mee this week and then next week got rid of Kilman, I could then bring in, sorry, I'm so bad with technology. I could then bring in Dyer and Dyer is absolutely nailed. We know that he's going to play. So that could be the look of my new team, which I quite like, not to, not to brag, but I'm quite happy with that. And I know I'm going to get comments that are saying, no, you should bring in Saki, you should bring in But so much of FPL is about having fun. And this is the kind of way I do like not following the advice sometimes and just doing my own thing and kind of owning it when it goes wrong which is why i'm going to have watkins on my team the entire season until he scores a goal but that is one idea i know that there are things that i could tweak in the midfield i could bring in dyer this week but in terms of fixtures this week they've got newcastle whereas i'm kind of banking more on bournemouth to bring him in and keep a clean sheet but then they have liverpool the week after Oh, this long-term planning is stressful stuff. There's a lot that goes into it. But do let me know in the comments. I like the look of this, but I do admit that I probably need some more Arsenal players on my team. So it could be a case that I bring in Ben Mee this week, hold off on Dyer, and then bring in an Arsenal midfielder for the Forest game. 
It could be after this week I get complete FOMO and end up bringing Saka anyway. I'm not sure, but I am leaning towards the Ben Me route instead. But let me know in the comments if you think that is an absolutely terrible idea. I think the overarching theme of this is I just want to have a bit more fun with my team rather than following what the good advice is. Because if a punt plays off, it's so much more satisfying. The other elephant in the room is the fact that I have got Trossard on my team, who I only wanted to bring in for one week. So it would probably make more sense to do Trossard to Foden situation or Trossard to Saka situation. But we're living life on the edge now, people. So let me know what you think in the comments. That is my current thought process. I'm not entirely sold on any of my transfer options at the moment. So I'll probably make a last minute decision ahead of the deadline tomorrow. Ralph is being incredibly unhelpful today. There is something about not following the crowd that makes the game a little bit more enjoyable. So I don't know. But then equally, when everyone scores big, it's nice to be part of it and not feel like you've missed out. So we will see what I decide to do, but follow me on Twitter at YelenaFPL where I always post my team just ahead of the deadline and let me know what you're deciding to do with your teams this week and best of luck. Finally, if you haven't subscribed yet, I am a broken record, but please do subscribe because I am getting close to 2,000 subscribers and I will see you in the next video.